welcome to a very special episode of Jacob's House of Rock. Now today, what I'm going to show you guys is how to turn your Mexican jazz bass into basically the equivalent of a USA-made jazz bass. So my little project here for today is to uh, upgrade the electronics in this one with ones equivalent to or the ones used in those in the American series of jazz basses. So this one's like I think a 2002-2003 Mexi jazz bass and I'm not sure if it before I got it um, it was second hand so I'm not sure what happened with the electronics since then it has had a lot of problems with the electronics uh, like uh, randomly uh, going out and mid playing and stuff like that some solder joint stuff I've tried to fix it but uh, it's still it's still a problem so I figured I may as well replace all the electronics and while I'm at it I'm gonna put in some new pickups and basically show you guys what that sounds like because I've seen a, a couple of different videos doing similar stuff online but nothing that really like a lot of them don't have like the full comparison in there and how it's done so that's what this video is going to be about so stay tuned guys and now listen to a quick little comparison between the before and after of my modifications to this space here all right guys so what you're about to hear now is the pure un um, unamped uh, DI signal from from the bass. So here we have the before. Just starting with the neck pickup on full tone. Now for the uh, bridge pickup. Right there you could actually hear the problems with the electronics I was uh, referring to at the beginning of the video. It just does that and I, that's why I figured replace everything, why not? Alright, both pickups this time. Alright guys, so the materials I'm going to use for upgrading my Mexi Jazz Bass here are first of all some Fender Original Jazz Bass pickups. These are the type of pickups you find in the Getty Lee Signature range of jazz pickups. They're modeled after the uh, 62 style jazz bass pickups. So yeah, these should be really good. I've heard good stuff about them and I'm a massive Rush fan. In fact, the reason I I play jazz bass is because I wanted to, you know, get as close as I can to the Getty Lee's tone and, you know, um, the jazz bass and these, these sort of pickups are a big part of that. So hopefully there'll be an improvement over the standard ones you find in these Mexi jazz basses. Mine is a 2002 or 2003 Mexican jazz bass, I think. So. Yeah, let's, we'll see what these sound like. I just got them from eBay, from America. Uh, they, the, they weren't cheap, but they were uh, a decent price for some Fender pickups. 
The next thing is CTS potentiometers. Uh, uh, these are like the industry standard for potentiometers and I have um, two linear ones. Um, even though you usually use audio ones for instruments, I've heard that if you use linear ones to um, for the volumes that they'll help blend uh, w w the two pickups when you don't have them both on full because uh, that's a big problem I used to have with this is that they had some trouble blending and I'm hoping that using the linear pick um, potentiometers will help with that and the tone is still going to be an audio taper one uh, yeah, I've also had a lot of problems with the circuitry in my jazz bass because I got it second hand, it had some issues with, I don't know, the joints not being all there. It was actually wired really strangely when I opened it up later. It wasn't wired like it was meant to be. So I tried fixing it up, changing the wiring, and that helped a bit, but it's still, it, as you'll hear at some point in the review you'll, uh, during the demo, it does, um, it does the the sound does stop sometimes, just on its out of its own will. I think that's because of a bad solder joint or something like that, so... But I, I do also think it's a problem with uh, potentiometers in there, so hopefully uh, replacing those will help. I also have a Switchcraft jack, because it's very important that you have a very stable jack, because they... They tend to rattle around a lot and get loose over time, and these again are the industry standards, so uh, and what they use in actual fenders. And the last two things is um, a, a, an orange drop uh, 0 0.047 capacitor. Um, you don't need an orange drop, I'm well aware of this. It doesn't um, re actually change the tone, it's the values of the capacitor. You could use like a 5 cent capacitor, it would be the same thing. But uh, since I was going all out and trying to make this bass as fancy as I could basically, as close to the American one, I thought, you know, why not spend the extra 2 3 dollars, I don't know, might have been like 4 or 5 actually, but either way, I hope... Um, for, for an instrument like this, it's not much of an investment, and just for my own happiness of knowing there's one in there, it doesn't really make a difference though. And finally, just some uh, standard copper wire. I got this uh, black and brown copper wire. Uh, I wanted to get some uh, cloth wire, not because it d d does anything to affect the sound, but only literally just because it's easier to work with because all you have to do is pull the wire back instead of stripping off the, the rubber coating which is can be quite tedious and difficult sometimes if you don't um, have the proper equipment or whatever but uh, I found that the cloth wire at least uh, nationally is very expensive per Per meter and it just wasn't worth it so um, I didn't want to wait a month to order a cheap batch from China but I might do that in future if I'm in, not in a rush to do something but so I just have this standard copper wire and it's gonna gonna be suits suited to the task I think. but first of all what I need to do is I need to clean this thing so I'm thinking about refurbishing the fretboard a bit so I'm gonna take off the strings and I'm gonna I'm gonna have to do that anyway to put the new pickups in, but um, I'm gonna take those off and I'm gonna uh, scratch off any grime on the 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 fretboard. And um, I heard that if you use a uh, lighter fluid, that that helps uh, do that. I don't think I have any, so I'll just probably end up scraping it off. But I'll uh, see what I can do. Uh, don't don't use um water and a toothbrush or anything like that because uh, any moisture on there is it can get in there and can warp the warp the wood. Uh, I'm also this has I haven't oiled it in like a year or two, so I'm gonna put a little bit of linseed oil and work really hard to wipe that off. But um, it should uh, last the base for a good long time. And yeah, and then we'll get to the electronics. So the first step before I, um, you know, lay this in a working space and get to the, the electronics is I'm going to take off the strings. Just loosen those up. I just have some rotor sounds on here. I also, 
another side effect of being a Rush fan and a Yes fan. They both, uh, both Geddy Lee and Chris Squire use Rota sounds exclusively, and I have to say they do play really nicely. They're very bright, very fresh sounding. I've had these ones for, uh, I don't know, on it for maybe two years now. Uh, I just keep them fresh by the boiling them or slapping them, as you see in my other video. I'm gonna do a, a new version of that video because it, it isn't very good. The effects aren't as noticeable in that as they other as they really should be but do look out for some of those little tutorials on how to slap your bass strings fresh because they it really does work but i will be using these same strings when i uh put it all back together for the for the demo that you probably already heard a little bit of but obviously i so i'm still in the middle of uh making this mod i have not yet heard the finished product and what I'm going to do is I'm going to remove the strings from the headstock, but I'm going to keep them in the bridge because pulling uh, this bit's already spiraled, so pulling it out of uh, out through the bridge is going to be a little bit of a pain for anyone who's uh, tried to re uh, swap out strings that have already been used. So there's no point in removing that. I, ideally, I would have liked to have swapped out the bridge. It's just um, I don't have the funds for that at the moment, and I'm pretty happy with the one I have at the moment. It's got those, uh, uh, I forgot what they're called, but the ones that have the screw texture on this, so you can uh, align the uh, spacing of the strings a lot better than the standard ones you get, which are very, which just have the fixed one groove. But this you can move them around. It's a pretty thin bridge plate, so the sustain on this wouldn't be the best. Um, I would like a, a badass bridge, but uh, I don't think they're making those at the moment, so they're going for absolutely ridiculous prices. And if if you, you guys have any recommendations of a good replacement bridge, an affordable one for a mixy jazz bass, especially if you're going for that Getty Lee sound, please let me know, because I would love to hear some suggestions. All right. I did also upgrade this one to have locking tuners, by the way, which are pretty helpful because I've had some instances of this bass where uh, the, the the top top strap lock has just fallen off on me too many times. So uh, you can't you can't always upgrade every guitar to these. I think because like uh, you'd have to really modify the hole they use because some of the um, some of the screws on other guitars I've had have just been too big and really dug out a lot, so you'd have to put a matchstick and some glue in there to help with that, but on this one it wasn't a problem and they really do help. So here we have the fretboard, which now I'm going to grab a business card basically and scrape, or like a credit card type random thing, and scrape off any excess stuff before I um, get to polishing it up. So here you go, random plastic card, and you basically just scrape, scrape at the frets. And you can already see some of some of the dust and stuff that's piled up, piled up there, starting to come off. If you find you're having trouble just using uh, a card or something like that, it's not really getting in there. You can always scrape a, a razor blade across there. Just don't don't go too rough, of course. So here, as you can see, I've just got a little uh, little razor blade, and just gent just pretty loosely sc scraping up the frets. Let's get rid of. Any mess, don't go too crazy with this, of course. And maybe just focus around the actual frets themselves, get any anything out of these areas. So that's where a lot of that mess is. A good way of doing this is to don't cut into the wood by um hopefully this little 
be visible, but don't scratch like this. Scratch like this or like this so that you're you have the blade flat and then the sharp end you point towards the, the grain and go away from the sharp edge basically like that that way you're not cutting into the wood where it wants to dig into it but it only scrapes off the grime on top all right so what i'm using now is a piece of aluminium foil that i've scrunched up i use this technique a lot when i'm cleaning off corroded metal stuff and it helps to just anything that's just slightly getting oxidized it helps to really clean up and it's just gentle enough that it's not really going to damage anything but at the same time it does have an effect and cleans up the base pretty nice All right, you can see it's cleaning up some of the little darker dents in those frets, so that's going good. First of all, let's start by taking this thing apart, and I'll show you what was on the inside, basically. And here's my mess of a wiring job, as you can see in here. I really tried to block everything off with tape for not uh, connecting, and it's probably one of the reasons it has all these problems. So our first step from removing this would be first of all detach. Uh, they just break off these connections. Uh, detach the ground wire and the old pickups. As you can see the wires in here were pretty awful, so it just falls apart. So do this one. While I'm doing this, I almost forgot. Should put cloth over here. So, next step is take these toe knobs off. Let's see? One tone, volume, and volume. Is a lot of dust in there. So obviously it's been a very long time since these have been taken off. So loosen these bolts before taking them off. Hopefully the CTS pots will fit just fine in here without having to make any adjustments because that would be a bit of a pain. Uh, as you can see, these ones are really tiny compared to the, the new ones that are going in. So, there should be just about enough space in this cavity either way. So we're going to take them off have a good close look at the mess that was in here before. Not the best, and just some foil loosely in here is shielding. Oh no. Uh, yeah, I'm hoping to do a much better job this time. <laughs> so I'll just skip forward for you guys for when I've removed all of this and the foil from here and all of that. So as you can see, I've taken all this stuff off of this little scratch, this little plate, getting rid of all of this junk up the cavity. Now to take out the old pickups. Start with the bridge pickup. So we're very interesting to see what kind of a pickup we have in here. So not entirely sure what pickups uh, 
the standard Mexican jazz bases use. I'm assuming there's some sort of ceramic magnets in here, but we'll know when we get this guy out. There we go. Get that up. Nice. There's the pickup, it's got like a cardboard base here, it looks like it. Um, very thin wires coming off of this. So, it's the bridge pickup for you. you can, so you can have a look inside. Okay. So, I don't really want to take this apart anymore because I think I'll break it, but if you look in there, you can see there are four magnets on either side of these poles, just, they're not even, the wines haven't come out, so they're stuck in the, uh, they're stuck still inside here, but uh, you can see them just in, in there, there's a little pocket that has the windings, but these magnets, uh, just little bar magnets, probably ceramics, on either side of these pole pieces. So I'll put that back together in a second, but I'll take out the other one, and I'll worry about these later, I don't really have anything to do with these at the moment. But for now, let's take out the neck picker. See if we have the same cardboard base. <laughs> cover came off, but not the pickup. Okay, well we can get a good look inside. Uh, ooh, it's stuck to that sponge. There we go. This one is different. Look at that. That's not the same as that one. This one doesn't have those bar magnets. This one actually sounded uh, sounded pretty good, so this one might be an Alnico magnet pickup, and I must say the bridge one was always my favorite to begin with, so that's pretty cool. Some uh, Something might be written down here. It's the number. I, I, don't, I don't know what kind of pickup that is. But it was my favorite from this base, and under it we have this guitar's uh, manufacturer number. And the sponge from the other one's still stuck in here, so I'm gonna remove that. Because the new pickups come with a little copper shield that will go under here. So I'll get rid of that sponge. Okay. There's the ground wire. Okay, we can just, I think we can just leave that be for the moment. Take off my cover. Yeah. Okay, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to wash this, um, this plate. So, because it's got a lot of tape and residue like that that needs to be cleaned off in order for stuff to adhere to it but, um, later. Alright, so I've just given that a nice little wash. Uh, might clean off the bottom a little more, maybe set it just around these holes just to make sure there's no oxidization or whatever so when the pots go on they help to ground this cover. Now what we need to do is we need to solder all the new stuff onto here. Also better clean out the inside of these and I'm going to shield this with some, some aluminium tape. Uh, Aluminium tape is just as conductive as copper tape, pretty much, but the only f difference is it's a little harder to get the connections to join, uh, to get the, um, because of the, it's harder to solder to, is what I'm trying to say. But, with this one, we put our components in, so, 
the audio tape apart, we are going to put in the tone position, and then the linear parts are going to go in the volume. So, do these fit? It looks like they don't. Uh, that's gonna be a problem. Let me think, what can I do? Alright guys, so I did uh, figure out what to do about the parts not fitting. Um, so, uh, I think it was just an issue with one of the measurements being metric and the other um, imperial or whatever, but either way, um, I've got, I'm still not finished, but I have managed to uh, make the holes, uh, some of the holes big enough for the CTS pots to fit in. And the way I did that was I used uh, scissors some good strong scissors, these, and basically it's just been doing something like this, and I don't know what the, I think it, this might be nickel or something, but it's a fairly soft metal, so this seems to do the trick. It takes a long time, but I got it working. So I'm going to continue doing that and I'll get back to you guys when I'm ready to do the next step. <laughs> Alright, so I got all these holes to the right size. It was actually a lot faster than I expected, so that's good because I was worried I'd have to get a drill out to drill these out. Uh, another little tip I found was if you, if you got something like this and you uh, stick it in the hole and you push and twist, it helps widen these a little bit too. So, let's put our pots in. Uh, make sure you got this the right way up, so the bottom's facing up. Just gonna clean this off again. So this is the audio taper pot, and that one is the tone, so it's going to be up here at the front. So I'm just going to put all of them in here and then loosely bolt them on. Okay, both the linear pots. Again, if you aren't comfortable using linear ones, just go for audio taper ones. Currently, go wrong with those either. Now we're going to put the switchcraft jack on. It should go on without a problem, I think. Yeah, no problem. Let's see which way should we have this face in. Put it this way. Because we're going to have the, um, the hot on this side, that goes to the tip, and the ground's going to be on this side, uh, along these pots, so... So that's how I've got it. Just check if it will fit. It's going to be a squeeze, but it should fit. Worst case scenario, I may have to adjust these holes, but I, I think it'll be alright. Alright, I'm just going to tighten these the bolts.
don't time these too much not to damage the pots but just so they're stable and there we go got all our pots in time to uh, pre-solder these and get to wiring so first let's get our grounds in so while I'm waiting for the soldering iron to heat up, I'm going to bend back. Um, again, just uh, there are a lot of great tutorials on how to do this, but um, I'm gonna show you to bend these two back on the volume on the volume knobs. You bend the uh, last one on the right on either either two when you're looking at it this way. So just be careful when bending them, try not to put too much stress on the actual uh, potentiometer because this is going to be where our grounds go. solder those to there and also we're going to put our ground so, um, connections through here as well. Always make sure you have a little wiring diagram when you're doing this stuff while you've got the iron hot. It's good to know what you're doing. <laughs> so this is just a really rough one I've drawn up. I have uh, links to better ones in the description. I probably at some point in this video put up a couple um, just on the screen for you guys to see but they're easy to find. Just google um, jazz based wiring diagram and should uh, find it no problem. But let's um, got a rosin core solder here and, and our soldering iron should be hot by now. So let's see, gotta uh, pre-solder some of these connections so let's Make sure the area that you're soldering is hot before you heat up the solder. Have a nice clean soldering iron. Hopefully that should be start doing something. There we go. Don't blow on it if you, you, you can. Just let it cool on its own. It'll help. Uh, solder properly and in good connection, nice shiny joint, everything like that. Okay, we also need to pre solder a couple of these lugs. Heat them up first, and melt them on. This just helps later when you got all the wires ready. It'll make it a lot easier yeah when if when you're doing this definitely make sure you either have something over your instrument or you're not doing it over your instrument like I am probably shouldn't be but I don't know now first thing we can do is we can put in our ground wires for that we just got this black copper wire Alright guys, so what we want to do is we want to put a ground between here, 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 and here. So all the pots, um, this area where these have been soldered to the top of this is a good place to start. And this one on the side here is a good place because we can add the cap uh, one lead of the capacitor with that as well. The other one is going to go to this first lug here. Or alternatively, maybe it might be a little neater actually to have another spot on this side for the capacitor, but we'll see. I'll decide that later. I'm not doing the capacitor just yet. But, I can solder this onto here. I made a stripped length of this just a tiny bit longer so that I can. Go put it through this loop and onto the top of this pot just so I can double solder it through the loop and the top to help bridge that connection. So what I'm gonna do is just gonna 
lightly sand. The area there. Just to expose a little more metal, make sure nothing's oxidized. And I'm going to feed through this bit. Uh, first I'm just going to cut an appropriate length here to fit through that loop. There we go. Strip this end. This one actually turned out to be a little longer than this one, so I'm going to put the long end through here. Uh, let me just pre solder these. So, you don't want to do this on the base anymore. <laughs> place to hold this one while it's while I pre-solder these leads. As always touch heat them up with the soldering iron then press your solder. So I've been having some problems with my soldering iron. I'm just trying to clean. I just cleaned the tip, and I'm waiting for it to heat up and to re-resolder uh, the tip of that. Uh, so in the meantime, I'm just going to cut my remaining bits of wire. Now this soldering iron should work a lot better. Get this joint going. Alright, so we now have this wired up. All that's left to do is add the, um, add the pickups. And that's the rest of the, uh, the pickups and the ground wire, which we'll do after shielding the casing here. So let's just move our camera over this way. Alright, so here's our base. We still have our ground wire in here, which I'll try to keep safe and exposed there. Uh, first, I'm going to try and clean out some of this rubbish that's stuck in here. Because it is a bit filthy. So this is a good way of getting out some of this grit. Now what I'm going to do now is just shake all the dust out. There we go. Alright, that is now ready for this, our tape. So what we're going to do, just to make sure we have some ground to our insulation because this stuff is um, 
sword. It doesn't connect with the soul, um, with solder that easily. Uh, a tip I've heard is to flip it over and put the uh, lead in between with some solder in there and then heat that from the outside. Check the inside of these pickup cavities. Just get a nice bit like that. Do is fold this in, try and feel out exactly where this stuff should go. The important part to remember here is that this is not here to look good, this is here to make your instrument play better. So it doesn't matter too much how it looks. Uh, though I am trying to keep it a little deeper here in these pickup uh, slots because in here you're not going to see anything here you might be able to see a little bit down the edge of the pickup if you're looking closely what we can do now is we can bring in our first set of pickups so these are the Fender original jazz bass pickups and bring in the bridge pickup so it should be the bigger one from what I understand because there are so it should be that one here it is comes with this so we can lift it to ground piece of copper shielding. So, make sure this bit of shielding attaches to this one. Uh, we have to put a little bit of solder and I'm also going to put a wire just to make sure this uh, is in contact with everything. But what we have to do is we have to put a bit of solder on the shielding that's already here and stick this one over it and then press the soldering iron on top of that to melt that solder and join the two. The problem is that this has that glue on the side which stops the um, stops it connecting pretty well. And while we when we have that bit of solder there, I'm also going to put a wire under it to, with that solder, and that's hopefully going to melt to it. And then it's, we can for definitely ground this a lot better if that wire is connected to it. And then the wire can then be connected to our ground on the pots.
hopefully that would have bonded those two. to the rest of our electronics. All right, so now we can get on to the fun things. The first thing we can do is we can start to, in, to attach our electronics into the main body of the guitar. So that first step will require attaching this to ground. So the ground typically goes right there um, on the tone pot. So we have a nice space already here where we can just solder this lead on. So you can't see, but I've got that um, ground lead attached around uh, the leg of the capacitor that's on on the tone pot that I left left loose there so that should be a good place to ground this thing. Add some solder to the joint. And voila we are grounded. Just see how that sits. Alright, and that fits. The only just. Now to attach the the last part, that would be our pickups. And our little shielded area. it just like so. And that fits in about there. Now we have a ground and our um, positive and negative coming off the pickup. Our positive goes to this lug here. On the bridge tone on the bridge volume, <laughs> uh, no, I should say. Well, the black goes to ground here. Okay, that's about what it needs. No. So it's going to be a little tricky, but I'm going to put it through the loop. Okay. 
that we made here. So, the project is now complete. As you can see here, I'm pretty happy with how it turned out. Uh, I had a couple of issues along the way. As you saw, the, the little pick guard here, the metal plate had the, the holes were a bit too small because they were designed for metric pots, while the CTS pots are imperial. And I have the same issue with the actual knobs. Uh, I can I can force them on, but I really don't want to uh, damage uh, the pots while doing that. So I'll either you know carve the insides of these out a bit to fit them on, or just get some new pots. We'll see. But that's not really important. What's important is how it plays and how it feels, and I'm really happy with the way the electronics turned out. I have it, there's no more issues with um, with the electronics faulting or or, or turning off. So I'm really happy with that, and the pickups sound pretty nice. Um, uh, the the bridge pickup doesn't sound too different from the one I had because I think that one was actually an Alnico pickup all along, but the bridge pickup was a ceramic one, and it, it shows this one sounds a lot nicer, I think. And overall, it's just it feels really nice to play through these. Uh, some other issues I had that I I didn't really uh, I skipped over a little bit were in the demonstration of how I wired everything was uh, the stuff was a bit tricky to put in back into inside the guitar the cavity there was a bit small but you know I, I got everything to fit eventually it's quite snug but um, everything's quite happy in there now uh, the the screw holes that are holding this plate on needed uh, to be uh, reinforced so I added some PVA glue on a bit of, bit of matchstick and stuck it in the holes before re-screwing it. Because 
what happened is actually it was a this um, switch uh, switchcraft jack is pretty tight. So so I, when I pulled the the lead out last time, it actually tore the top screw out of here. So that's not a good thing. But the, uh, as I said, the hole here was really loose because it had been op opened up a lot of times and over tightened and stuff. So I'm still waiting for that glue to dry, but it should be pretty snug. So. Uh, that's really good, and I'm happy with this jack. It's working really nicely. I made sure that I uh, got some heat shrink wrap on all the all the hot uh, wires in there, and not not temperature wise hot, but the ones that aren't ground or negative. So all the the brown wires in there and and the positive ones, I added the heat shrink around there so they wouldn't touch the insulation, which really helps uh, keep everything running running smoothly. Uh, also, the two uh, using the two uh, volumes with the mm, the linear pots, the blending on it, I wouldn't say it's that much of a difference from from how it was before. Uh, so I'd say if you're gonna like uh, go out of your way to find uh, linear pots. Then it's not that that big of a deal. I just audio linear. They're both pretty much the same when it comes to to this. But I can give you a little example. So this is a uh, with just the bridge pickup, and I'm gonna slowly uh, dial up dial up the neck pickup. So. see a big difference right away there with the slightest turn. So there is it So there is a, a, a fairly smooth transition but again like the audio tape ones at the end there still is that some jolt, so I, I don't know which is better. But I'm I'm happy that I I'm happy that these pots are smooth and work well and are nice and clean. No no buzz or anything. And yeah, the 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 pickups are pretty quiet. I, I tried to insulate it really well, get everything in there connected to ground. The the actual pickups came with some brass plates, which you which you saw you stick under them, and there's uh, they have wires coming off of those, which I just uh, soldered to the bottom of the bridge pickup pot. No, I mean the neck pickup pot. <laughs> I get those can mixed around way too much, but it uh, doesn't really matter as long as you have it grounded somewhere. So, yeah, thanks for checking out my video. I uh, I hope uh, this inspires you, gives you some ideas. If you have any suggestions or any questions, don't hesitate to ask. Um, if, if I were to do this again, uh, the advice I would give is uh, use wire that's pretty thin, like the stuff that came with the pickups was nice sort of strong wire, but the the cloth casing around it wasn't too bulky, so so it worked really well because the the other wires they had were pretty thick. They're about two or three times thicker than the than the wire in in these pickups, which already by no means the the wire in here was um, too. It was like really thin. The wires that were on the Mexican wiring earlier were like way like needle fin, but these are pretty decent already. So the ones that I used had thick rubber around them and were thick wires, so they were really hard to fit into the pots. And also make sure you have a good soldering iron that and some, um, what's it called? Flux. Because uh, I, I had lots of issues with stuff connecting. Later on I found that a different type of solder that I had worked better than the one that I was using. I think it had um, it was a better quality flux core solder, so I'd, 
I recommend making sure your soldering iron is working well because I had to scrape the end of it to clean it off every couple of seconds to make sure it actually worked and, and joined the bits well because you don't want bad solder joints because that was another big issue I had with the wiring that I tried to fix earlier is I wasn't as experienced with the soldering iron and uh, it's it had a lot of bad joints I still do in this one but they seem to be holding for now and I made sure everything sealed off well so it should it should hold together pretty nicely so yeah thanks for checking out the video stay tuned for more content I'll I'll have a video up on a Mexic uh, not a Mexican a Chinese copy Rickenbacker base which I recently got so I'll do a little review of that because um there are some out there but uh, only like one or two are actually pr actually pretty good so hopefully that'll give you some information if you're after a Rickenbacker copy and yeah let me know what you thought of the video all that uh, like subscribe comment yada yada uh, keep on rocking people peace out mm -hmm.